Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here. And in this episode, I'm going to take you through a handful of free scripts that you can download from the internet and use inside of Illustrator to get great looking artwork and save so much time above anything else. So the first free script that I'm going to show you is duplicate at selected anchor point. So I have a, a piece of artwork here, which is the planet. I'd like to duplicate it. This is ideal if you want to create copies of your artwork in specific places. Well, you can use a second object and its anchor points as the basis for where it's duplicated. Meaning that this purple line I have lower down here, if I select that, you can see by the squares here, these are all where all the anchor points are. I would like to create a copy of this artwork wherever there's an anchor point on this object. And you can do that very, very quickly with a script. Now, the way this works is if I just expand up on my layers panel, you'll see that um, you have to have the object you want to create copies of has to be higher up in the stack than the thing that you are dropping it onto and creating duplicates around it, its anchor point. So in this case, the thing that's the reference for the uh, where the anchor points are is called path. That's just here. And the object that I'm going to create duplicates of is this one here called group and it's the planet. It has to be higher in the stack or it has to be in front of the other object. So if I select it, hold down the shift key, shift and left click on the planet, then go to file, go down the list of scripts and then choose dupe at selected anchor points. And there you have it. Click away and you have your duplicates in exactly the place where is an anchor for this object that we had selected a minute ago. So the next technique is where you can uh, randomly color multiple objects all at the same time with a set of predefined colors. So this will save you having to click on, in my case here, one of the leaves, pick a swatch, then select the next thing and pick a different swatch. So to do this and leave the original on the left hand side, I'll need to go to the window menu and you will need to have in your swatches panel, I dare say, a set of grouped colors. So I have in here one that is called foliage four and there's a mixture of different types of greens in there and even some browns. Um, and that's the key thing really. And you can create a group by selecting several swatches and then clicking on the group icon down at the bottom of the swatches panel. And that puts them into a group. So if you want to create a group of colors, that is how you can do it. You can either do it with selected swatches or the selected artwork in your document. So, um, if I go and select all the leaves and then just deselect the tree, um, you have to then tell Illustrator which group of colors you want to utilize. So I'm going to hover over and left click on just the folder for foliage four. That highlights them, tells Illustrator these are the ones we want to sample. And then you go to file, down to scripts, and then you can choose random swatch fill. And there you go. Because if you want to narrow that down to a handful of colors, go to file down to scripts and then random swatch fill just to get a smaller array of them. So you can try this over and over again um, and see which is the best fit really. So that one is really handy. That one is random swatch fill. So the third free script is called Metabol Arc. So if you want to create something like I have here, I, I create this kind of lava lamp style liquid and that kind of effect of creating interconnecting liquid um, and the globules in there is, can be quite challenging. So um, this one works really well for this kind of situation. If I select my red circle in here and then shift and left click on the other red circle, you can just start off with regular shapes inside of Illustrator, then go to the file menu, go down the list of scripts, and then it is Metaball Arc. You'll get a dialog box and then from here, turn on the preview checkbox. It's a case of just deciding where you want to center the angle. So you can drag it like this to get a very low angle. You can drag it towards the right hand side to increase the angle like so, uh, there obviously will be a limit because they're hardly connected in here. And it's just a case of dragging it to the point that you feel works. When you're done, um, it will then create that third piece of artwork to connect them together. They will still be separate, of course. But then if you go to the window menu, you can always go down to uh, Pathfinder and you can choose to unite them together as one object. And then you could uh, color them with a gradient as I have done in it with the other ones in there as well. So that's um, Metaball Arc. The next one is text block. So if you can spot it, I do have some text on this artboard, which is just down here. And the neat thing about this is that you can just take, and it has to be separate lines of text. Um, so for every line that you have, it will have to be a separate text frame. But if I select all of them and then make my artboard fit in window, you can then go up to file down to scripts and then choose text block. 
You'll be then asked, what do you want the width of this text to be when it's finished? It's maximum width and it's always measured in points in there, but you can put your own units in. So I'm going to leave that set to the default of 300. Click OK. How much of a gap um, do you want between the text in there? Again, I'm going to leave it set to three millimeters for the default. And then you click OK and it does this. So it's quite cool for doing that kind of thing. You obviously could merge that in there and you could then use that as artwork on a coffee mug or something like that. Um, so that's a really neat one you can keep trying it over and over again. It doesn't affect the original text in there. So you can alter that and then have another go. So that is text block. So creating a calendar is really tedious work um, to not least get all the dates and all the months pulled together. But this calendar pre-maker is pretty cool. So uh, you don't need any artwork to start off with. You just go straight to file, down to scripts and choose calendar pre-maker. So the only thing I would tend to say that you'll have to change in here really is the year. So see 2020 and then click OK and it'll ask you, you know, which of the months do you want to generate? Well, I when I first started using this, I was just using the one or more months that I needed. But you can leave all of these in here. Click OK. It's going to go right from January to December, of course. And then um, we've also got which of the days of the week you want to include. I'm going to leave those in there, set the defaults. And then if you want to put any holidays in, obviously that will depend on which part of the world that you're in, um, but you can leave those as they are if you wish. I'll put your own in and then I'll click OK. That actually generates a new Illustrator document and then it gives you your calendar. So um, as you can see here, it has created styles for all the text for the numbers, the weeks and so on and so forth. If I click OK, I can take the month that I want. So if I drag over these in here, copy those, I can then go back and I could put them on my calendar design. So it'll put them in a separate document. And then obviously from there, you want to change the colors and things like that to match uh, and a little bit of tweaking. That's why, of course, under the window menu, down under type, you've got paragraph styles. And that's where you would tweak the appearance of the dates, the days of the week and the months in there to suit, of course. So that is calendar pre-maker. And uh, that rounds up all of our scripts. As always, folks, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel here, you can always subscribe. We post videos every Friday on how to create great artwork, save loads of time and um, money as well, which is always good. So until next time, farewell. <laughs>